Hey, teacher friends. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn all about using digital escape rooms in your classroom. I'm Kim Crouch, and I am a middle school English teacher on Long Island, New York. I'm also a mom, like many of you, blogger and teacher author and seller of English Oh My on Teachers Pay Teachers. I love incorporating technology into my classroom, especially in new, innovative, turnkey ideas. This is why I cannot wait to share this session with you, because once you introduce a digital escape room into your classroom, your kids will be asking for more. I promise. So this session is going to teach you the difference between a digital escape room and a paper escape room, how these escape rooms will transform your classroom, why and why you should be using them in your classroom. Kind of weekly, I have to be honest. They are amazing and you are going to love them, I promise. If you haven't, I hope that you had a chance to download the PDF that accompanies this session. It has the notes taking for you and some other good pieces for you to use later on. It also comes with a very special freebie for you. So I hope you're ready to get started. So bear with me a second. I am going to change over my screen so that I can share it with you and I can bring you into one of my pieces here. So let me share with you. Okay. So today, again, you're going to be using learning how to use digital escape rooms to enhance your classroom. Um, and I have a example of one of my escape rooms that I'm going to share with you in a little while. And I promise this is going to be may help you become the 21st century teacher. So let's move along here. So what is an escape room? I'm sure many of you have heard of them before. They are actually a physical adventure based on a theme, movie, casinos, storyline, books, etc. And what happens is in players solve puzzles and riddles using clues, hints, and mindful strategies to unlock the objective at hand. Usually the players are given a time limit to escape the room, most likely opening a variety of locks, ciphers, and codes to reach their goal. Many teachers have adapted the traditional escape room into the classroom, where students answer questions regarding the curriculum, solve riddles and puzzles, unlock codes, and attempt to escape the classroom before the time or period is over. Now, what is the difference between a paper escape room and a digital escape room? In a digital escape room, all the teacher needs is a computer lab, Chromebooks, iPads, or laptops. While in a paper escape room, teachers will need many manipulatives like locks, folders, hiding places, and printed materials and activities for each of your students. When using a digital escape room, there is zero setup. Fantastic. We love as teachers, we love zero setup because we know from class to class, especially if you teach on the secondary level, you have 45 minutes and or 40 minutes and now your next class is coming in and you it's you're scrambling and you don't have a whole lot of time. So you really have to think on your feet. So being that there's zero setup with this, the only item needed for this type of escape room is a website address and of course your laptops, iPads, whatever you're using. The setup for the paper escape room can be lengthy and setting up for the next class can be really tricky because you're going to have to keep your kids in the hallway. You don't want to see where that you don't want let, let them see where you're hiding things. You don't you're going to have to reset your locks and there's just a lot sometimes just a lot of setup and really you have to think through how you're going to let your next class get involved in a paper escape room because again it can be complicate things if you have a back to back period. So moving along, what's very nice about the digital escape rooms is that it, besides your regular content area, English, math, science, social studies, language, a foreign language, or, and or whatever you might teach, you are also exploring the other ISTE, the technology um, standards in with the digital classrooms. So on top of your regular common core standards or the standards that you may use within your classroom having to do with your subject area, you're using technology 
the technology standards. And if you look, I have a couple of them that would work if you wanted to do this in a lesson plan or if you want to do it as an observation. So your principal really would see how you're incorporating technology into your classroom. So you could see students can understand the fundamental concepts of technology operations, students collect data or identify relevant data sets, they're using digital tools to analyze them, students use digital tools to connect with learners from a variety of backgrounds and cultures, students use collaborative technologies to work with others including peers, experts, or community members, students contribute constructively to project teams assu uh, assuming various roles, and so on and so forth. And there's a, quite a few technology standards which is which are great because you could see how you can use many of these throughout your throughout your classroom. So I did include the link down here. If you ever want to look at the technology standards, you can go to the ISDE computer technology standards for students and they pop right up just like, just like anything else. So let me move forward. Now, one of the big questions, how will digital escape rooms create engagement and transform my classroom? Because listen, if we can transform our classroom, it is golden. It is a big high five. So. I really, I really took a, a long time to go through this for you because I want you to be able to explain this to your principal or your chairperson if they ever ask you, well, why, why is this important in your classroom? So students, number one, students are not completely, mon they are not using com mundane worksheets, um, but rather working on these activities. Two, we all know our students love a challenge and a competition, regardless of what age, we know how competitive they are. Three, your students work as teams, fostering collaboration and relationship skills, as well as social awareness. Four, your students will tap into their higher level critical thinking and problem solving skills. Five, digital escape rooms are perfect for your special education and ELL students for the practice of communication skills and techniques. We know that can be sometimes a challenge for these types of students and this definitely, this type of activity really encompasses communication. It has to because they're working as a team. Uh, number six, rather than the teacher facilitating the lesson, the students take ownership of their learning. Number seven, the escape rooms teach your students to work under pressure because they're under a time constraint. Number eight, digital escape rooms will present as a game, but realistically your students are practicing learning and applying the subject specific content while using important life skills to complete the activity. And number 10, simply they're just so much fun and wait until I show you. So. Can I make my own digital escape room? Yes, you can, I promise. Creating a digital escape room is just like writing an essay. So I know you like my English uh, connection here. You have to brainstorm, you have to plan, you have to draft, and you have to publish it. You have to have an understanding of the Google Apps, um, sheets, drawings, um, Google Slides, all of those. Uh, digitally, these are very important. You have to think with the end in mind. What do you want your students to review, learn, or accomplish by the end of your escape room? Are they learning about figurative language? Are they learning about a specific time period in social studies? Is it a specific math unit? Most importantly, creativity is key. The more creative the escape room, the more your students will enjoy the activity. So let me hop out for a second, and I'm going to bring you back over to um, a the actual digital escape room in just a second, if you can just bear with me for one second. Let me move this over, and I'm gonna move this back. Right here. Okay, so let me show you what an escape room looks like. So I created this escape room for my students on figurative language. 
and you I'm gonna just move it around here so you can see it a little bit so if you it says um, can you get the adorable alien monster back to his spaceship before it is too late so this is their really their question now let me navigate you a little bit through this Google site uh, I created this on Google Sites, and you have to have a little bit of background with Google Sites. Actually, Google Sites is very, very easy to use. So let me scroll down for you here. So the first thing you will see are the rules, okay, to the uh, educational escape. Once you and your team members are ready to start, click the timer button below. You are not allowed to pause or change the time. Two, make sure you look at everything on the home page. Three, you are not you are allowed one free hint you are then allowed two more hints but they will cost you three minutes on the clock and only the teacher can change your clock and four use any notes you have on this subject so maybe uh, you have given your kids some notes regarding the vocabulary or the terms and they can use their notes below that is the timer now I uploaded this right from YouTube it's an awesome timer I'll show you how it works real quick it has this very cool Kind of musical backgrounds and then it does like a very cool countdown um, and you just let it play in the background here you go three two one so if you can change the time of course if your classroom is a 40 minute class a 35 minute class and and so forth and you can change this um, very simply by just dragging the bar of course most importantly, one of the first things is the narrative. You always want to start an escape room with a narrative. They have to be, they have to have a starting point. So my narrative is start here. So it says, you and your friends are riding your bikes through the woods at dusk when you hear a funny little sound coming from the bushes. One of your friends tells you not to investigate at, as it could be a rabid raccoon or animal that does not want to be bothered. However, you are curious and start scouring through the bushes when you find this guy. Boop, boop, boop. He is awfully cute and extremely friendly, and you don't want to leave him by himself. The extraterrestrial seems in distress, upset, and he continues to run in circles when one of your friend's bike wheels uncovers a map. This map is clearly a path back to the alien spaceship, and it is obvious he is on limited time. The map is very tricky to read, and it seems there are puzzles, locks, that have to get solved in order to find the spaceship location. Can you and your friends solve this map, the map, help rescue the alien, and get him back to his spaceship in time? Here is the first clue on the map. Use the code on the homepage to help you solve the puzzle. So here is a hieroglyphic puzzle. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, and there's some clip art, there is, uh, I'll explain this in just a second. This is where they're going to end enter their answers. There's the hieroglyphic coding. There's some Morse code coding, coding, a hidden picture, a puzzle, and a map down here. And, and just if, uh, just another Morse code, if it's easier for the kids to navigate down to this one. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, but the narrative tells us to go to the hieroglyphics and to use the hieroglyphics to decipher their code. Now to make things a little quicker, um, just so you know, the this here tells the kids to click on the small pine tree to the right. Boom. Okay, so now watch what happens. If they click on the small pine cone, pine cone, the pine tree, they are going to come to a Google form. Now it's pretty simple. Answer the questions in all caps. You you should um, the, have the basic knowledge of a simile, metaphor, personification, onomatopoeia, and hyperbole. At the end of these questions, the first clue to the map and set your next task with, with will be revealed. Just have to change that to you. Um, so a comparison between two items using the words like or as is a simile. Okay, so. Um, they have to answer them in all caps. Now you notice when I type, it tells them it is incorrect until they spell it correctly and do it in all caps. Pretty cool, right? So then if they hit next, 
It brings them to the next question. The curtain of night came upon us as we were riding our bikes home. Which figurative term is being used here? And that, of course, is a metaphor. So let me... Next. The wind sang softly to the trees at dusk. We knew we had to get home. What figurative term is being used here? And again, you could see that my students were clearly practicing their figurative term review. So personification. When an object or animal takes on human characteristics, this is a personification. I try to trick them here, if, as you can see. Okay, and it tells them wrong answer until they type it and spell it correctly. You know, so we love spelling. Okay, an over-exaggeration is a hyperbole. And then it is, boom, they answered their first five questions. Answer these questions revealed, answering these questions revealed the first clue on the map. In clue number one on the homepage, type in Main Street. So what they have to do now is they have to go back and they have to go up here and type, I'm sorry, below here and type in Main Street. Now watch what happens. It still keeps telling them to try until they do it correctly. And then it turns green. Awesome, right? Now there was a second clue here. Once you type in your answer, head over to the hidden picture and find the pizza in the picture. Your alien pet really needs something to eat or he's going to get unruly. Click on the pizza, okay? Now they can submit it, they don't have to. All right, so I am going to go down to the hidden picture. Now we need to find the pizza, which is right here. If they click on that, it's going to bring them to a second activity. Pretty cool, right? Now it's for time purpose, for time saving purposes here. I'm going to tell you what it says. And if they answer all the questions correctly, this is what we call an alpha code. There's a number next to it and it spells out something. And in this case, when they put it all together, it spells out library. Okay. They have, to, um, they have to put this in the location code number two, and then they have to put the puzzle together. So if they go back to here, okay, they're going to put library here. Boom. Okay. And then they have to go to the puzzle and put the puzzle together. Now, again, for time-saving purposes, I already have this image for you, which looks like this. Okay. And you'll notice that it has the Morse code. So what they'll have to do is use the Morse code from here to figure out the message. Now, what the message says is it says, type downstairs in the third code and click on the football in the hidden image. So now what they have to do, we're going back to the main, so it said click downstairs. Okay, our third clue, and find the football in the hidden picture. So let me just find the football, which is all the way in the back corner. See it? Boom. It's going to open a word reveal. Very cool, right? So um, what in the word reveal, I'm just going to pop over for a second. In the word reveal, what it's going to do is they're asked to fill in, they're asked to fill in the chart. So let me, I'm going to pop back over so that you can see um, the chart. I know you keep looking at the screen, so I want you to see me sometimes. Um, I, I'm going to pop over so you can see the screen here. Okay. So now they have to fill in all, they have to answer these configurative language questions. They have to fill it in and all of the bolded boxes is going to spell out something. So you have, my bike weighs a ton. This, sen the, this sentence is an example of what? And in this case, it's a hyperbole, obviously, okay? And when they put all the codes in, it's gonna spell out basement, okay? So B-A-S-E-M-E-N-T, you can see, B-A-S-E-M-E-N-T. So this is a comparison using the words like or as simile and, and so on and so forth. Hurry, add this word to location clue number four. So now what they will have to do is they're going to go back, okay, 
and they are going to go back here and now they have to enter basement. Okay. Now, they did it. They have all four codes. Okay. So, let me bring you over. And I'm going to hit next. And now, congratulations, you rescued the alien and you were able to get him to his spaceship before it left without him. Keep up the good work. You're officially a figurative language guru. Woo -woo. Head over to the link. And once they click on the link, they get a cool certificate that says we did it, we beat the clock. And they can take pictures in front of it. You can have them do uh, a few other things. You know, you can take pictures in the class, you can hang them up, and you can make it a competition. You can, you can have them, you can give your first place winners a prize. You can, you can do, you can handle it however you would like, you know, however it fits the classroom. Now, I really tried to make sure that these fit within the 40 to 45 minute period. So I will, I can show you, I can show you another one that I have worked on. I'll show you my, my To Kill a Mockingbird one. How does that sound? So bear with me just one second. I am going to flip you back over to me while I'm working on the computer. So what do you think so far? You know, feel free as we we go through this to ask me any questions that you like. I can, I can answer them. Um, I know when, as you were going through this, you were probably thinking to yourself, wow, there is clearly a lot of, a lot of work that goes into this. And it does. You're completely right. There is a lot of work. You have to think through your activities. What I did include in your freebie is I included a kind of like a blueprint map for you so that if you would like to try to create your own, you can do that by, you can do that by filling in the, you can do it right through the Google form, or you can actually print it out and you can start kind of blueprinting what you would like to do for your, for, for your, your escape room, if you would like to try one out. So I'm just opening up my other one. I'm just popping through my files here. Let's see if this one. Okay, so again, let me pop back over for you. And I will show you just a small little tidbit of my To Kill a Mockingbird one. Again, what's really nice about these is that you can do, you can use these for literature. You can use them for a specific unit in the history book. You can use it just for terms, for vocabulary, context clues. You do it for a math, a specific math fact. You want your kids to pra practice a specific math term that you had taught them. There's so, there's this, the options for this is endless. And I just love creating these for the kids and they absolutely love them. They're having fun with them. They're enjoying them. They're learning as they work. They're working together. And again, you can break your kids up into groups of three, four, whatever you think works. You can pair them up if you want. And that's fun too. Let two of the kids work together. So this one I did for to Kill a Mockingbird as a little bit of an introduction to the novel, Save the History Assembly. And again, I have the directions and I have some pictures at the top here. And then I did this narrative a little bit different, as you can see. I did, I don't have a puzzle that I did at the bottom. I actually did something with bolded letters. So this one says, your school is having an assembly on important time periods in history. The school and teachers are bringing in primary sources, sharing videos, and creating a learning experience for the students. One of the presenters, Mrs. Clementine, is a close friend to Harper Lee, the author of To Kill a Mockingbird, and also lived during the Great Depression. She has a ton of information to share, including some of Harper Lee's early writings. 
The whole eighth grade has been waiting for the moment to meet this presenter, and they are lined up to ask questions. There is only one problem. As Miss Clementine arrived, she accidentally locked all of her items in her briefcase. Mrs. Clementine is older, and she has forgotten the lock combinations. She has enlisted the class to help her unlock her briefcase so all the items can be shared with the student body. Can you help her? You're going to read, answer questions, and solve puzzles about the Great Depression and the novel. Use the clues and items to help unlock the locks. Mrs. Clementine is presenting in 45 minutes. And again, I have right here, I have the timer. I have some clip arts. I have the cover to the novel. I have a pretty cool plane ticket where there's a website where you can, you can create kind of faux plane tickets and add your own information. I have a puzzle like I did last time. And I don't, let's see if we can figure this out. So click on the bird on the <laughs> on the book cover cover yes so if you scroll down here's the book cover click on the bird and it opens up some information about Harper Lee they have to answer questions so again look I have some reading comprehension here and Again, I use some of the same kind of activities that I used um, in the last one, but I have a couple other things different, you know, and I, I formatted the whole website a little bit differently and so forth. So let me pop out here and talk to you guys one last time before. So do you have any questions? Do you want to ask me anything? Can I help you with anything? You are always more than welcome to contact me at englishomy at gmail.com. I will be more than happy to answer anything for you. And if you flip through the PDF, you will see a link to an awesome freebie that will give you the first two steps in creating your own digital escape room. I show you how to make a Google site. I show you how to make a narrative. And I hope that it will get you started and almost kind of ignite your creativity. So I hope you enjoyed my session. I hope that you will try to use some of these escape rooms in your classroom. They are awesome. They're fun. They're creative. And that's it. So again, if you have any questions, please contact me. You can find me on Instagram at, at English underscore O underscore my. You can find me on my blog, EnglishOhMy.com. You can find me at my TPT store, my Teachers P Teacher store, English oh my. And I again, email me anytime. I hope you enjoyed this session and thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful summer, teachers, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.